Hvala. Thank you. I will switch to English. I think it will be useful for the discussion because of the panel is diverse in terms of participants. I must say I enjoyed the inputs and the presentations I heard before, and I think there might be some interesting connections some names uh, I also mention, and also some problems that uh, my, may arise uh, through uh, this topic that I will present on. So I will present uh, some archival materials and also some uh, really initial thoughts and questions that are related to a much broader um, research that is conducted as part of the bilateral Croatian Slovenia research project called Global, global exchange models and practices of global cultural exchange and non-aligned movement research into spatio-temporal cultural dynamics. Having dealt with memorial production of socialist Yugoslavia myself, this research focus um, on uh, this research focus on global cultural exchange led me to think about ways in which the rich legacy uh, and memory of the Second World War, which was uh, very important for uh, uh, Second Yugoslavia and which was in post-war Yugoslavia framed uh, in the uh, term uh, people's liberation struggle or socialist liber revolution. So how that legacy and memory was represented through different media and used in different and various ways as a diplomatic asset uh, across both West, East, as well as non-aligned uh, context. Uh, as this question is extremely broad and complex and it enters fields of political history and science as well as memory and heritage politics, I will focus on monuments uh, as perhaps the most concrete and familiar manifestations of the transfer of that historical, that particular historical legacy. Um, hmm. ah, okay. So I come up with some, uh, with some questions. So how and why monuments of Yugoslav Revolution, uh, to make it short, made their ways to gallery spaces and became a, a kind of a genre or a brand. What happens to monuments when they enter galleries? Or more precisely, related to what I will talk about, how are monuments represented in gallery spaces away from their original social context or urban and natural environments? And finally, what happens to meanings that monuments convey uh, when they cross borders. So what does this pertain to uh, in relation to universalism and internationalism? Even, th even though I will not deal with contemporary, uh, and I'm referring to the picture in the background, post-socialist context, the ways in which monuments appear in galleries and museums today is provoking to seek for the origins and prehistory, possible, sp possible prehistories of such impulses, and perhaps even draw from them uh, certain lessons um, and understand better understandings. Exhibitions, as many researchers dealing with the positioning of Yugoslavia and in online movement have demonstrated over the recent years, remained important yet no longer the only tool for dissemination of cultural exchange in the wider international context. The new roles exhibition took on in those specific global geopolitical uh, constellations generated some new themes, some new models, and also some unusual trajectories of physical movement and interactions with other uh, tra uh, traditions and cultures. At this occasion, I will not try to offer some systematic answers to these questions, but I open them as some framework, possible framework for uh, the process of reconstructing and uh, analyzing two case studies uh, from the 1980s on which I will focus, uh, which are two exhibitions of monuments that stand out in terms of their ambition to, on the one hand, enter art system, and on the, uh, on the other hand, to serve as far-reaching state-sponsored diplomatic tools on a global scale. So, I will start uh, by uh, giving a context of how uh, we can talk about representation or presentation of monuments uh, in, uh, in Yugoslavia, so within the context uh, of an ideological context of Yugoslav state. Uh, and as most of you know, uh, we talk mainly about monuments as some living practice, as some, something very highly prolific, something highly prolific and diverse that is socially uh, engaging uh, with the communities and the society, society in general. 
something that is not necessarily uh, asking to be exhibited in uh, gallery spaces. But still, we have uh, several ways we can outline. Uh, this is just a very broad uh, preliminary outline of uh, the models or modes of uh, exhibiting uh, in uh, Yugoslavia during socialism. Uh, so monuments can appear um, as history. Uh, they, they are attached as uh, part of historical exhibitions, so they kind of illustrate desired narratives. Uh, then they can also appear as uh, heritage. They are representing a certain um, element, certain segment uh, of official, uh, new official state uh, uh, heritage. Uh, here we talk about documentary uh, exhibitions that are uh, basically inventories or maps uh, or uh, um, kind of like uh, uh, overarching um, uh, uh, concepts uh, that are encompassing all kinds of sites, original sites and objects that are related to memory of the Second World War. Then in certain cases we can talk about monuments that appear as a genre within uh, artistic uh, opus in uh, certain exhibitions of uh, sculptors or architects. They appear as a kind of a, a specific niche uh, of uh, production, but they are still framed mm. within the uh, opus of certain individual uh, artists. And here I put uh, uh, an example of such uh, exhibition that was done by architect uh, Zdenko Colazio, who made a, a specifically uh, uh, an exhibition specifically uh, dealing with his work on monuments. But this is more of an exception uh, uh, than, I, than a rule, I would say. Uh, and then finally, monuments uh, were exhibited as, as kind of a process or a practice. And this is mainly done through competition entry uh, exhibitions. So a lot of uh, competition entries, uh, a lot of competitions for memorials, uh, generated occasions for uh, exhibiting uh, ideal models or um, uh, sketches uh, or different kinds of thinking about, about monuments. Um, on the other hand, uh, when we look at the international display of Yugoslav monuments, we see a bit of a different uh, tendency. Uh, first, uh, uh, we can talk about uh, publications uh, that appear kind of early on, already in the 50s and then in the 60s more, that appeared to be as some kind of catalogs without exhibition. So they, th th those were not, uh, they didn't come from uh, real exhibitions, but they appear to be as a kind of uh, compendia of uh, highly aesthetized images of, uh, of uh, also monuments chosen according to certain aesthetic criteria. And these kind of publications, uh, per specifically this one on the, on the, uh, on the screen, uh, it was published uh, in, uh, I think, five or six, six international languages and probably intended also as a, as a kind of diplomatic gift or a kind of a gift that is representative of Yugoslavia also the title Yugoslavia. No? Uh, then we can talk about group exhibitions, uh, international group exhibitions that also uh, could feature certain uh, uh, artworks that are related to memorial themes or certain even memorial function, but also within the frame of uh, group uh, exhibitions, perennial exhibitions uh, abroad, uh, or thematic exhibitions, but that were not specifically aimed uh, as representing monuments. And then uh, we have uh, also uh, cases uh, of solo exhibitions that were f sp sp specifically focused on monuments. And one of the most uh, uh, maybe um, interesting and representative one uh, is, uh, and fascinating in, uh, uh, in a way, is a big uh, exhibition that was held in, in Santiago de Chile uh, of um, a sculptor Miodrag Zhivkovic in 1970, and that was actually his first and only solo exhibition. He never had mm -hmm. this kind of uh, representation, um, uh, actually presentation of his work in Yugoslavia itself. Uh, so the interest of about his work uh, was generated el elsewhere on the occasion when he was there. Um, uh, uh, doing, uh, um, making uh, one monument uh, in Punta Arenas. Um, and then finally, uh, 
we have thematic exhibitions of this is something and I will talk about of uh, about specifically specifically aimed to frame uh, the topic of Yugoslav monuments now and uh, one of the first uh, to my knowledge uh, such uh, exhibitions uh, uh, is uh, the one uh, held in Kiev uh, in then uh, USSR in 1973 that was called Monuments of Revolution of, uh, of Yugoslav Revolution. Uh, and I only found, uh, I didn't found, find any documentation on this exhibition, but I found little uh, note uh, in newspapers that uh, mentions that the, there were 70 monuments uh, on photo panels uh, selected by Miodrag Živković, which is a <laughs> a uh, very uh, interesting um, a fact uh, that uh, an artist uh, was at the same time also the curator uh, of this rather big uh, overview of Yugoslav monuments, uh, of which um, I hope uh, I will find more uh, information soon. Uh, so this is in a way an introduction to what um, uh, the two case studies that I will uh, discuss. And the first one uh, is um, in the case of monuments uh, at the 1980 uh, Venice uh, Biennale. Um, so most of you, uh, especially uh, I assume in uh, Ljubljana, are quite familiar uh, with this uh, story. Uh, it is a kind of, uh, I would say, rediscovered um, uh, um, Biennale, uh, kind of lost from the collective memory, uh, um, uh, maybe also because of uh, this specific, specific focus uh, and quite uh, odd uh, uh, choice uh, of uh, showing Yugoslav monuments on the occasion of the thematic Biennale that was dealing with the art of the 1970s. And the commissioner was Goran Kržišnik. Was Goran Kržišnik. Uh, his first proposal, as I found in the archives of Yugoslavia, was actually uh, in late 1979, where he describes uh, that he, uh, that he as a modern gallery, uh, would uh, propose to have uh, three, um, uh, three artists uh, who are uh, the masters of the memorial sculpture. Uh, that was Tihets, uh, Jamon and Živković. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic was not initially in that concept, but he later uh, appeared as part of these four uh, big names uh, that were presented uh, at the exhibition through, ex uh, through a photo, uh, big uh, photo panels and a few... Um, uh, uh, slides, uh, 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 slides that are also here are the authors that were uh, present at the slides, and uh, a model uh, for Doni Gradina here uh, is the part of the uh, catalog uh, and the text uh, of which. Um, I will read uh, this part uh, that is kind of uh, quite clear uh, uh, in terms of how it frames uh, the concept. So the 70s uh, brought interesting work uh, in all branches of the visual arts. It was a time when a new exceptionally lively generation of young artists grew up and ma matured, a generation whose work we by no means underrate and who could certainly fully satisfy the demand to present the creativity of the last decade in its innovation and in its links with tradition. But in a search for the art form, which is at the moment most noticeable and perhaps most specific and which at the same time also most clearly indicates the artistic freedom of the Yugoslav artist, these gigantic ambient designs spring to mind. Their realization is proof of the general public's recognition of the meaningfulness and aesthetic importance of the artistic structuring of the landscape and also of its readiness to en ensure considerable financial support for these projects. Because freedom of artistic expression is not only a question of official declarations, but also of the provision of opportunities to realize this freedom. So this uh, exhibition provoked a uh, number of reactions from uh, um, contemporary art critics uh, in different uh, uh, publications and newspapers across Yugoslavia. And I selected two reactions from uh, Croatian um, uh, newspapers, uh, which I found very interesting as both of them are uh, very sharply critical uh, of uh, this um, exhibition of monuments and are specifically tackling the problem of exhibiting monuments. So Elena Cvetkova 
in her text uh, that's called Some Do It Better, Neki to, neki to Rade Bolje, um, gives harsh criticism, but not of the chosen topic, the monuments, but of the curator's choices and uh, concept. So she said, the most striking mistake in our pavilion is that we did not show the challenge that prompted us to build our monuments. Kozara's cries, the battle of the wounded of Neretva, the unprecedented epic of the National Liberation War, almost two, two million victims, unparalleled heroism, for God's sake, the whole world admit, admits this to us, remained in our Biennale pavilion only a sentence in the catalog, nothing more than an inspiration to the artist who found himself themselves in extremely bloody circumstances during World War II, from battles to concentration camps, just a death of artists and society to the heroes and victi victim victims of those days. And she, uh, she continues, so instead of presenting the link between contemporary art and the revolutionary tradition in the so socio-historical context, we present four authors. And that's all anemic text in the general catalog, a few enlarged photographs, a few models, and a handful of slides. Uh, but even that is shown at the lowest professional level. Then she continues to criticize uh, the technical execution of the exhibition, uh, different kind of technical issues from black box with slides, uh, confusing two channel projection, uh, wrong attribution uh, to images and artists, uh, etc. Uh, and continues uh, with the last chapter of her rather long text that is called The Fear of Politics and Politiza Politicization. Our pavilions, I, I'm reading, obviously I'm quoting, um, our pavilions in uh, Venice are wary of politics because of the long suppressed concept of pro uh, providing that we are a free country. Imagine communists and, then, and they paint abstractly. So she's, she's, she's using a lot of uh, sarcasm. Uh, this intrusive ser uh, serving of the world that we are like the others, that is progressive in the way of others, that uh, is in fact colonial mentality, fear of what is our own and authentic, shows in fact only a picture of still existing bureaucratic shackles of our cultural life. Not shackled in creativity, but shackled apolitic and conservative selection and presentation of artistic achievements. And in the end, she concluded, this is the end of the quote, in the end, she concluded that we should have shown cultural phenomena that are authentic and by far pioneering in comparison to the West. And as examples, she offers uh, artist colonies uh, at similar events. And she continues, I quote, we can list many artistic phenomena that live in our environment, but which are on margins uh, of art clerics' interests. Let us remind ourselves only of the, our factory galleries, ironworks in which alongside production, art is created, urban transformations, achievements in children art education, interventions in the humanization of work and a new spiritual relationship between machine and man, thousands of new contenders in creativity that break down the boundaries between amateur and professional in fine arts. The other text uh, by Vladimir uh, Malekovic, also a very prominent uh, art critic uh, in Vjesnik, uh, titled A Monument to the Monument, um, uh, is, uh, he begins by saying that uh, our presentation at Biennale is a digression in the, uh, in the Biennale, that it does not, uh, in fact, correspond to the topic of art of the 70s. He claims that the, the choice was a risk and that, I quote, modern culture, uh, at least that with democratic attitude, does not prefer monumentalism and giganticism in art. Um, he also uh, uses uh, the opportunity, it seems, of this exhibition to kind of um, express uh, his negative um, perception of uh, monuments of this kind as being too aggressive. And I quote, uh, the ambition of the sculptor to transform entire landscape with his intervention was not only an attack on preserving the authenticity of place of historical events, but also on the sensibility of modern men. Jamania, for example, designed the landscape for eternity on the Mrakovice in his own way. Art turned against nature here. Such cases, and this is no exception, are a matter of the boundary line that, uh, that a monumental sculpture can go, can go without destroying what is under and around it. He goes on to comment on the fact that this um, 
a selection, in fact, is not uh, does not fit or represent reality, where monuments are done mostly in a conservative way and, uh, as he says, with a lack of talent. And he continues to say it was important, at least for the selector, that in our uh, in one such official occasion we distance ourselves from everything traditional, uh, from from every traditional fo formal conception. And he continues, uh, I quote: "In this way, according to this Venetian image, Yugoslav monumental sculpture identifies with the positions of avant-garde art that are." concretized again with historical delay, mostly in abstract form, and rejects before the world public um, before the world public everything that is different from the abstraction, yet original and unrepeatable. So um, in the end, he concludes um, that namely, many sculptors understood the effort to confirm the revolution in the specific domain uh, of art as an open door to non-obligation, both thematic and formal. Rare is an ability, and an, an even rarer the case, that in their works, the originality of events and even the authenticity of expression, of expression are achieved. The chosen form is usually random, free from any message, its meaning is automatically guaranteed by the authority of the event or place uh, where it was erected. Finally, uh, he um, uh, he concludes, the Yugoslav exhibition in Venice, composed mainly of gigantic memorial sculpture, sought to show uh, those cases in which monuments do not aspire as much as the expression of content, but to formal individuality. The significance of these monuments, therefore, is not guaranteed by the con contents of the revolution from which they should be derived, but by their autonomous artistic value. In this way, satisfaction was given to that part of the international audience, which is of paramount important uh, uh, audience, which is of paramount importance in the tri uh, trial of the work of a certain aestheticism. Polemical remarks, however, could have provoked the pronounced giganticism of our memorial complexes. So, in the case study uh, num, uh, in the case study uh, two, uh, I'm going to uh, sh uh, expose basically uh, archival documentation uh, tracing a, a, a way of a traveling exhibition that was called Yugoslav Memorial Sculpture that was that took place some five years after uh, the Venice Biennale. Uh, and uh, I must say, at the beginning, uh, uh, before I start uh, sh uh, showing uh, the, this case study, presenting it, that I don't have any uh, visual material. So uh, it is completely based, it's kind of like uh, an enigma. Uh, in an archive I haven't found, I was trying to find certain uh, visuals or photographs of this uh, exhibition, but uh, there was none, so uh, the illustrations are just fragments of the archive. So it was a traveling exhibition that was um, that happened kind of in like I separated it in three phases. Uh, from 83, 84, there was a preparation phase. In 85, the exhibition traveled to Cuba, Mexico, and USSR. And then in 67 and uh, in, 80, uh, in 86 and 87 to Angola and Mozambique. It was initiated uh, by the Federal Office for International Scientific, Educational, Cultural and Technical Cooperation, which was a body controlling the uh, cultural um, exchange and um, cooperation uh, 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 on the international level, very highly high level controlled uh, system uh, and was commissioned basically or given over to be organized uh, by the Museum of Revolution of the People's Yugoslavia in Belgrade, which was the central museum of revolution in Yugoslavia. Interestingly, the coordinator was Danica Abramovic, the mother of uh, Marina Abramovic, who was a mu museum director at the time. Curator was Slavko Šakota. And the design of the exhibition was by Goj Kovarda, a famous uh, Serbian uh, uh, designer. Uh, so uh, the source of this is uh, in the archives of um, uh, uh, Yugoslavia and Belgrade. So the exhibition format from, we, from what I know uh, from the archives is that there were 36 monuments presented, four authentic sites, uh, 26 authors and altogether 185 photos on uh, presented on 50 thin aluminium boards um, of the size that you can uh, read, quite large 
boards and with two types of uh, compositions and the following descriptive text. Uh, there was also a carousel slide projection that was uh, supplementing uh, the photos with some materials and documents related to the Second World War although I didn't find a clearer description of this. And there was also a catalog that was uh, printed uh, in each uh, country in different languages. Uh, here is a list of sites and uh, authors and also photo images that were, that were used. Many of them or most of them were, were the ones that were repeatedly used in, um, uh, in, such, uh, in such occasions for international representation. Uh, so in the in the first phase, uh, as I already said, there was a, an expert group uh, formed that uh, met many times through uh, several months, and that they, they uh, decided uh, on the selection criteria, and they um, pointed out that they're insisting on the highest aesthetic criteria, only an aesthetic uh, quality of memorials, and that all non um, artistic or non non aesthetic uh, criteria will be left. Uh, uh, aside. Uh, and the aim of this was, uh, as, as is quoted here, uh, that those should be works which are supposed to represent Yugoslav memorial production to be on the level of the best works of such kind in the international perspective. Um, in the uh, catalog text uh, that is basically summarizing the the, the expert work uh, working group um, ideas, uh, there is a long description also of a kind of chronology of development of Yugoslav monuments. Also, a mention of something that uh, is is uh, uh, termed as Yugoslav School of Monuments. That is uh, the focus of this uh, exhibition. It is following the. 15 last 15 years from mid 60s to uh, mid 80s um, and it is uh, also uh, decorated with this like uh, phrases uh, um, kind of similar to the discourse uh, also that we uh, heard from uh, Kržišnik, I would say. Uh, in the later chronology, uh, uh, the exhibition actually started to travel in 1985, in March, first to Cuba, Havana, uh, then to Mexico, to three cities in Mexico. Uh, there was a catalog in the Spanish printed. Um, and then from Mexico, uh, it came back to Belgrade and then to the USSR. In Interestingly, in the, for the USSR uh, exhibition, there were two uh, new monuments added in the list, so so much of non-artistic uh, criteria. Uh, and uh, uh, the two uh, locations, uh, one of uh, which is um, uh, the v Vilnius, as, uh, as, you can, as you can see. Um, I couldn't find any of these catalogs. They were printed. There is uh, like uh, uh, <laughs> receipts for the costs for all of these things, but uh, I couldn't uh, get to these uh, catalogs. And what is interesting, uh, as I mentioned, costs is this this uh, endeavor, this uh, this huge uh, exhibition project was very costly, of course. Um, and uh, when you look at the, the the way that the costs were um, separated, uh, they were uh, separated uh, according to the number of monuments from each country. So uh, there was like a ratio for each uh, republic of Yugoslavia uh, of the participation in the budget. Um, uh, and this also meant uh, that there was a lot of struggle to gather all this and combine all these finances as the exhibition was um, extremely uh, getting more and more expensive with the crisis uh, and inflation, etc. in the in, in the 80s. Um, uh, interestingly, the last phase uh, is uh, the one when um, exhibition travels to Africa, to Angola and Mozambique. Um, and um, we also know that the catalog was printed, uh, but finally, uh, this is a, a document that is uh, rather telling in terms of uh, what happened to uh, the uh, project of representing monuments in, an ex in, an, in a global exhibition. This is a document that is saying uh, that the new director of the museum, uh, Millard Gonchin, uh, says uh, uh, on in September 1987 that we declared that the Museum of the Re Revolution of the Peoples and Nationalities of Yugoslavia has prepared an exhibition in Yugoslav Memorial Sculptures, which will be shown in Maputo, Mozambique. The exhibition is, export, uh, is exported as a gift. 
and remains in the permanent ownership of Mozambique. Knowing the context uh, of the whole production of this uh, exhibition and the fact that uh, the organizers were struggling so much with um, uh, the finances, it is quite likely that this gift was basically uh, just uh, a lack of finances to return the exhibition to Yugoslavia because there were uh, previous announcements that the uh, that, uh, uh, exhibition will be exhibited in Yugoslavia in the end. Um, so uh, since I'm kind of over time, uh, I will uh, finish here and then I guess we could uh, talk more in the discussion. Thank you.